In this video, I want to talk about two nodes that are actually already hidden inside Maya for retopologizing, but they haven't been fully integrated into the interface yet. Hopefully this demonstrates that Maya is planning on bringing in a retopologizing toolkit into Maya at some point in the future, but the good news is that these two nodes are usable right now. What you're seeing me do here is assemble a simple shape, so it doesn't really matter what I'm doing here, I'm just making a shape to use as an example, and I wanted to talk about two quick notes up front. The first is the second of the two nodes we'll be using is only currently available for PC and Linux, so Mac will have to wait till it's fully integrated. The second node is this method is really only usable on simple shapes to begin with. If you are retopologizing a full character or a creature, I'd recommend still using something like Mudbox or ZBrush to do that. This is great for sort of prototyping simple and quick mechanical shapes and just getting a better topology to start with. Cool, so let's say that that's the shape I want to retopologize. What you can see is it's got a pretty bad topology across it, so that's what I'm trying to fix. The first node we're going to use is by selecting our object, and in the bottom left, Mel tab, we're going to type in poly remesh. That's one word, lowercase p and uppercase r. What you're immediately going to see is we get this triangulation across the surface. It's essentially trying to bring a uniform triangulation across our shape, and each of these triangles is dependent on a unit on the grid. We'll look at that in the second example a bit further. So the second node I want to use is following the same process. Select your model and type in poly retopo. Again, lowercase p and uppercase r. What you're immediately going to then see is a retopologized version of your shape. Now I'm only going to change one setting in this example and that's the target face count. I'm going to drop it down to about 960 faces to get something a little bit more reasonable. And I can even push this lower. So I might go something like 480 or something like that. The next thing I want to do once I'm happy with that sort of face count is do a bit of clean up after the fact. So one example here is I delete history and I'll use something like the symmetry tool and maybe clean up these edges down the middle. In this case I can just delete them but obviously on some models I might have to actually add some more or merge some together. Nonetheless if I actually line this one up with the original you can see it's a much more uniform layout even if I have to do a little bit more clean up on the retopologized version or maybe even add in a few more faces. It's definitely a much better starting point. So I'm going to follow that exact same process on this slightly more complex example as if I'm prototyping these mechanical pieces for like an engine or something. So the first thing I'm going to do is boolean together this sort of piece here. So I've got a simple pipe and a simple sort of cylinder. Some of these pieces have bevels in them and I've kind of arranged them in a way where I can just use a difference boolean operation to slowly sort of eat chunks out of that original piece and line it up to this sort of shape here. So I'm already kind of halfway there in the shape, but the problem now is, again, that I have some bad topology that I want to sort of try and improve here. All right, so firstly, I'm going to delete history on this object. I'm going to type in poly remesh again, and I'm going to get this result here. So there's a few separate notes here I want to talk about and just some settings to play with to get some slightly better retopologizing happening. The first is because these triangles are worked out to essentially try and match these grid sizes, I've got much less triangles now because my object is quite small. So what I want to do is jump into the remesh node here and play with some of the settings. You might be familiar with some of these settings if you've done dynamic tessellation before in Mudbox. Now if I drop down that refine threshold, that's just going to add more and more triangles. And the beauty of that as well is if I look on the corner here where I have this kind of smooth bevel, originally it was something like this, a bit more sort of choppy. If I drop that down, I get a slightly smoother, rounder shape. The only thing is, keep in mind that if I use the poly retopo node on something that's really, really low, it's going to take a longer time to generate. So you want to find sort of a halfway point if you can. The main node as well though, and one of the reasons I have my color management off here is because you might be able to see some weird artifacts on the surface here and here. When you have a slightly rounder or slightly more organic object, what you'll probably find is a little bit of bulging on that shape in some spots, so there and there. And that's just due to this second setting, the interpolation type. By default, it's set to hybrid, which is actually probably the better of the options here. But what I'll do is switch it back to linear for a moment. And when I do that, what you can probably see is we lose those sort of bulges, but we still have these sort of artifacts here. That's essentially just trying to match your shape as closely as it can, but it does occasionally have downsides. To illustrate that, if I zoom right up to this sort of edge up here, there's a very subtle difference between the two modes. So what we have is a vertex here and a vertex down here, and there's a pretty much a 100% straight line between them. So this sort of vertex doesn't really matter at all. If I change linear to hybrid, keep your eye on that area, 
and see how it sort of pops out and that's simply because it assumes you want to try and get as round a shape as possible even if the original shape had sort of lower subdivisions maybe it had 20 subdivisions so it was a bit more sort of angular using the hybrid method sort of detects that it's a round shape and thinks you want that so it makes it round as possible and that's when you start to see these artifacts so I'm going to actually leave it at hybrid I'm definitely not going to use cubic because it blows it up into like a uh, inflatable castle or something like that so you can choose linear or hybrid it's not really going to matter which one but in this case I'm using hybrid and to get rid of these sort of artifacts after I'll just sort of be able to move those faces back in once it's retopologized so again that's specific to my piece but just keep that in mind all right so there's some of the main settings for the poly remesh node what I'll do as well is jump into the second node so poly retopo again it's going to take a moment to generate and then you'll end up with something really nice and uniform like this now occasionally you'll get asymmetry so I might have more edges on this side than this side and what you'll also notice in some areas is you might have lost some of the rounder sort of beveled corners you've got that's fine though because I can just reinsert some edge loops and rebevel some of those corners as well if I need to you'll notice that that same artifact at the back is still there but again I can just grab these faces and start pushing and pulling them back in but keep in mind it's going to be really slow and sluggish if you still have these nodes in the object's history so what we can do firstly is just take a look at some of the settings of that poly retopo node and then finally I'll just clean it up. So if I jump into the poly retopo node there's actually a few settings here but there's only one that really really matters for us and that's essentially the target face count. So what I've got is 2000 faces might drop that down to let's say uh, let's go 960 or something like that take a moment to regenerate again still a really nice retopology but something more reasonable in the poly count. Now the rest of them do affect the retopology but only very subtly and it's all essentially based on this target face count. As long as you're getting this right, the rest of these settings won't really matter too much. So the last thing, as I mentioned in the first example, is essentially just cleaning this up and taking it as far as you need. Once you're happy with the face count, what you can probably do is delete history on your object and start looking at some of those problem areas. So if I again look at this area here where there was that bulge, I could come into the top view and start sort of moving some of these edges back. So I'm being pretty messy about this here, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm meant to be doing. You can also look to areas where there might be too many edge loops. I could probably double click every second edge loop down to a certain point and then control delete them. And that would just make it a little bit less resolution around those areas. And then I could sort of fan them out. You'll find in some areas you do need to do a bit of improving some of the corners and such. But again, hopefully you've got the gist of those two nodes and what they can bring to an otherwise pretty messy model. Now as a last step, what I could probably do just to show you the shape that we'd get is duplicate this. I'm going to use a custom script I've got to select hard edges on the surface and then bevel all of those edges. But before I do that, I might just deselect some of these ones that I don't want to bevel. Maybe that one and that one. Maybe even that one there. Click bevel. Maybe bring up that fraction a bit higher. And then you'll see we end up with something close to the original. So this could be a high res version with the exception of some of those sort of artifacts I still need to clean up. So as a bonus tip, I want to talk about forcing symmetry in your retopologized objects. I'm going to demonstrate on this absolute masterpiece of a model. It's a flattened sphere and a stretched pipe. I'm going to unionize them together and I'm going to duplicate a second copy off to the side. I'm going to make sure to delete history and then I'll time lapse through doing a poly remesh and a poly retopo of this object. Okay, so this is my retopologized shape. It looks pretty good, particularly above this kind of goggle area here of the object. What I'm not seeing is very good symmetry and that gets even worse when you get around the back of the object. So you can see it's got a really bad sort of line down the center there. Now there's nothing technically wrong with this. It's still quads, it's still fairly neat, but it's not very sort of clean or professional. What I can't do as well is delete its history and use the mirror tool, which I've used previously, because I get this sort of weird pinching down the center. So there's actually a way to get around this, and I'm going to demonstrate on this second object here. Now what I want to do is double click these edges down the center line. I could do this before or after I boolean them, but I'm making sure to shift double click down the center just to make sure I've got them all selected. I'm going to go up to mesh display and click harden edge. And the reason I'm doing that is because poly remesh and poly retopo respect hard edges on your object. They respect all the corner edges because they're hard. And so if I sort of say this center line is now a crisp hard edge, it's going to try and respect that when it retopologizes. 
So I'm going to use the exact same process. I'm going to use poly remesh and I'm going to use the exact same values I used in the first example here. So it was 0.5 and then I did a poly retopo and it was 680 faces, I think. So 680 faces. And what we're going to see is a much better kind of example. So we've got the same face count, but now we have this nice, neat, symmetrical line down the middle and it holds up all the way around the back. We also have these sort of corner junctions here that you should expect to see from something like a smoothed cube as well. And it's a much sort of better example. I really don't have to do much cleanup, if at all, on that object. So that's just a tip on these sort of simpler symmetrical objects about forcing that center line down the middle. So hopefully you can see the value in using those two nodes. It's actually really handy to sort of prototype these simple mechanical shapes and it will really speed up your hard surface workflow. I'm going to finish this video just by showing you how you can add those two commands to your shelf, saving you having to retype them into the console every single time. So thanks for watching, let me know if you guys have any questions at all and I'll see you in another video.